Dave the Builder on KFM with Premier Timber Frame Homes, your expert guide to self-built homes. Premier Timber Frame Homes. Yeah, week four of our building slot here on KFM with Dave McManus of Premier Timber Frame Homes. Uh, Dave, welcome back into studio. Good to talk to you again. So over the last uh, couple of weeks, we were talking about planning and, uh, you know, what the different challenges might be in order to secure planning permission. And if you don't get planning permission, what happens then? But we're going to move on today and uh, take it that somebody has gotten planning permission and they're getting ready now to build the house to lay the foundations. Where do they need to start? After getting the the good news of the planning application approval, it's really only now that the hard work starts, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, So, I suppose your architect will put through a commencement notice and once that's received by the council and you get the go ahead, you're able to start you're able to start digging on site and stuff. Uh, I suppose there's a few little steps before you actually get your digger man in, you know, and um first of all, insurance. You know, if you're going to be building a self build uh, project, you're going to need uh, the proper self-build insurance, construction insurance, and that's uh, a, a definite. Because if somebody, not only if the people, um, if the trades people on site, they also need their own insurance, but let's say somebody comes in off the, the street or off the, the, you know, comes in and falls and trips mm. and you, you need your liability insurance there. So that's, that's a must. Um, moving on from there, when you get your just just as I was touching on the trades, when you're getting your quotes in from your different trade people, ask them for their liability insurance. You know, so get that in with the quote, the quotation. Another thing, a couple of things that you're, you're going to need signage on your on the road to make sure people know that there's a development project undergone. And um, so you know, site entrance sign. You're going to need signs stating that there's a construction site and keep out and people need to wear the appropriate safety gear inside. It's something that can be missed and I've seen many, many a project going ahead without these signage. Uh, We've done a couple of... We've done two houses in Mead a few years back and I remember... uh, there was two separate sites. They were about half a mile up the road from each other and we were working on both of them. The boat started around February and the ground wasn't that dry. One person was building the site uh, and they got the digger man in and dug, dug everything out and one site ended up being quite sloppy you know, mm-hmm. and it, it was really unfriendly to work in and people were going home mucky every day and stuff like that. And the other site, you know, you, you drive in, it had all the signage, it had the, uh, the the gates going in. The digger man was after spreading stone all over the place and it was a real clean site. It had its own toilet and a small canteen for the lads and it was just so nice to work on a site like that. And it was, it, it, it was a safe site as well, you know. So just... And I even remember one person put a lot of effort into, let's say, they, they were thinking ahead into the future. They were thinking about electric gates down the line. So they put in the service pipe for the electric gates. They knew they were going to have dogs, so they put in a pipe for the sewer. I thought this was very clever. They mm. put in a, a, a water pipe where the dogs were going and a sewer pipe where the dogs were going so they could just wash the, the dog waste into the sewer pipe every evening instead of picking it up. I just thought it was, it was so simple but so good. And then even Christmas tree lights. You know, put your sockets around your garden for your Christmas tree lights if you're into that type of thing. Um, I see my own father, uh, you know, if he built a house 20 years ago and he always said if he was to do it again, he would have put more electrical points around the outside of the house, you know. Yeah. Even for like lawnmowers and stuff like that, it's handy to have maybe outside, you know, so you're not running extension leads all over the place and that kind of planning ahead, as you're saying, is very important. In terms of the tradespeople that you need then, how do you source them yourself? Can you do that through you? or And how many do you need? What kind of tradespeople do you need? So when you're starting out, uh, I, I suppose once you have your, your, your architectural plans, you should be getting a set of construction drawings. And you should be able to get different tenders from the construction drawings. Example, the foundation. We'd always recommend to get three quotes for each different part of your house. So somebody is going to be doing all the groundworks, get three quotations from three local companies. You know, if you're going for timber frame, for example, 
get three quotations for the timber frame and so on, electrical, plumbing the, and, and the whole lot. That's how I'd recommend for anyone to go about that. But I suppose on the foundation side of things, I, I definitely get the, 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 the three quotes straight off, you know. Yeah. And what about the best foundations then for different types of housing? I know we've touched on this over the last couple of weeks, but we have a message in from uh, Philip in Leakslip who just says, if we're building a timber frame home, what is the best type of foundation and how do we get that foundation in? So I suppose there's 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 two typical types of foundations that is quite commonly used in Ireland. One is called a strip foundation, where you would dig down to the, the design or the shape of the house. Uh, you pour in your concrete and build up with rising walls and concrete in the centre with your insulation, etc. Uh, th- that's one typical type, um, which is quite commonly done. And then there's, uh, you know, you have your concrete slab, and it all depends on the land really in the in 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 your area, which will be determined by your engineer basically. Now there is another third type of of foundation which we which is kind of an innovative way. So it's 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 called um, core foundations, and it basically core foundation is an insulated slab. So it forms the shape of your house on the ground, and you pour your concrete into the insulation. And um, it's when I say it's new on the market, it's probably on the market thirty years now, but mm. it has a super. Uh, U-value, which means it is a super um, insulation, basically. Right, okay. And you were talking about insurance there a little bit earlier. Henry in Clane uh, sent a message in wanting to know who's responsible if someone gets hurt on site and do we need to get insurance when building a self-build project? Well, as you say, you do need to get insurance, but where is there kind of a grey area where the liability is or is it black and white? Who's responsible? Basically, if somebody, and I've seen this happen in other years, if somebody gets hurt on site badly, what they usually do is to sue, you know, if they work for the builder, they'll sue the builder and the land and the, whoever owns the, the house. Mm. It, it'll be a, that'll be the kind of case. But technically, the, the owner of the property, whoever's building, the se- especially on a self-build project, they're responsible, you know, so that's where your insurance is vital. Right, very important to get insurance and have that sorted before any work starts then on on building the house. Uh, Caroline in Enfield sent in a message as well to say that uh, it's a little bit different, that she's not building her own uh, timber frame house, but she's come across a timber frame house that has been lying derelict for a while. She's looking at maybe purchasing it, but it'll need to be done up. Uh, You know, is the timber in that badly, badly affected? And if it is, what's the best course of action there? Is it kind of knock it and start again? Again, or if the wood and timber is rotting, is it salvageable? Look, at the, 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 the wood and timber shouldn't be rot- rotten. If it's a timber frame house that was built in the last, you know, 20 or 30 years, it shouldn't be. But if she does have some concerns, um, I would go to an engineer should be able to come down and assess that and, you know, go go from there, really. I, I know someone in particular uh, in the west of Ireland that does surveys on different houses and stuff like that, so if they wanted to get in touch with us, we could, you know, pass on the, the details. Pass on the details. All right, we'll be in touch with uh, Caroline after the programme. Dave in Moon has texted in to say, what happens on the rare occasion that you might start work on your self-built home and then backtrack? Is it possible that you could backtrack and you know, either pull out of the the agreement and not continue to build the house, and if so, what happens there? And if, for, for example, bought the site, work is beginning there, the foundations have been dug out. Can you say, hold on a second, I don't want to do this I anymore? I, I, I don't want to build a house anymore. Well, look, at you wouldn't really be supposed to, you, you know, once you get planning permission, um, I think you're supposed to You're supposed to build a house, follow really. Follow through, yeah. You're supposed to follow through. Now, look, at there, we, we do see different uh, foundations left idle for many, many years. So it does happen, unfortunately. Sometimes there's disputes with, you know, maybe husband and wife or something like that and, mm. and, and things stop, you know. Okay, and on that, actually, if uh, kind of similar, then can you change at all what you have planned to do mid build? You know, or you have to stick fairly uh, sternly to that. If you've got planning permission for the council to build 
uh, a type of house. You have to stick rigidly to that. If it was something big, definitely. Look, at maybe like something small, like changing a window at the back, you'd probably get away with have a chat with your architect, of course. But something big, let's say, like even changing from tiles to slates, sometimes the, uh, the, the Kildare County Council or the County Council stipulate that you have to have natural slates or they might say you have to have a stone front or wooden windows, for instance. You know what I mean? So they, they are quite precise um, when it comes to the detail of the, especially the front and the face of the house. Right. What other points have you got then for us in relation to foundations or starting the building project? So I would definitely go to your local hardware company and I would make a deal with with them. So for instance, I deal with TJ O'Matton. He's in Prosperous myself. So I'd go in, there Derek in there as the floor manager and I'd go in and sit down with Derek and I'd say, look at Derek, here's the plans of my house. This is what we're going to need. We want to get, you know, a few prices set in stone throughout the the build and uh, we need somebody that you know they'll probably set you up an account uh, based on a few requirements and um, you know it, it's good to know that you have someone on your side as well you know because mm. uh, obviously you're going to have your architect and your engineer and that's fine but it, it's someone that you can pick up the phone to if you have a question but you don't it's not big enough to call the architect or the engineer about you can pick up the guys in the likes of TJ or Matney's they also have a lot of answers because they're in the, the whole industry you know mm, absolutely yeah, and very important to kind of have somebody who knows what's going on and uh, as you say, you can pick up the phone at any time and uh, talk to them. So that's one thing. What else then? Because it can be very daunting and overwhelming, but once work starts, things do begin to start moving and all the pieces start coming together. Absolutely, absolutely. So look at, like, w- w- once you have uh, someone over your groundworks and they're taking care of it all, your engineer is going to come in and sign off on the different stages. Usually once you get up to... Uh, in regards to mortgages or finance you you might do a site clearance and you get a few pounds you might get let's say 20,000 and then once you get up to uh um, let's say finish floor level, you get another few few bob. You know, it'd probably be a bigger sum once you get to there. And once you get to that stage, I suppose if you were getting in a company like ourselves, we're taking care of a lot of work after that. So we're taking care of the headache from there on to getting the structure in place. And as a self builder, that's what you want. Do you know? Now look at. If you have an experience and you wanted to build a blockhouse, that's all well and good, but there is a little bit more to it and there is a little bit more stress to it and there's more people involved and, you know, you're making sure the builder's on site this day and if he's not on site when he he's said he's not going to be on site, it's going to have a knock-on effect. So you could be the best planner in the world, but if someone doesn't turn up, mm. it's going to have a knock-on effect throughout the build and it's going to push everyone else forward. You know, so um, uh, th- that's 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 kind of that's kind of that end of things. But I suppose, and you know, in the early stages, you know, you want to be planning your windows and doors, and your, you know, your your, your roof and, and bits and pieces as well. Mm, and finally, then, from your perspective, where do you come in in that? Do you work on the groundwork at all, or is it after the ground and the foundation has been set that you can start moving in and working then and actually building the? the construction and the frame so we would be in in we would be in talks with the customer before the foundation and we would supply a lot of the drawings for the foundation uh, we would supply our own set of general arrangement drawings and um, we would definitely be having a couple of conversations with the groundworks guys whoever's going to be doing it and making sure that we're both on the same page do you know and um but we would definitely be supplying a lot of the of of the dimensions and stuff obviously you'd still need a, an engineer to sign off on on the foundation but People would ideally, in a perfect world, if they give us the deposit before the foundation, that would mean when the foundation is in, we're going to become...